our second speaker this evening is Sam Ilmworth, um, who's going to be telling us all about the poetry of science. Welcome to the stage, Sam. So good evening everyone, my name's Sam, I'm a senior lecturer in science communication at Manchester Metropolitan University and tonight I'm going to be talking to you about the poetry of science and specifically I'm going to be trying to convince you that poetry and science aren't two mutually exclusive entities but rather they are just different ways of looking at the world that enable us to better understand it. I'm going to start with a poem, a poem by Walt Whitman, written in 1835, called When I Heard the Learned Astronomer. When I heard the learned astronomer, when the proofs, the figures were ranged in columns before me, when I was shown the charts to add, divide and measure them, when I sitting heard the learned astronomer where he lectured with much applause in the lecture room, how soon unaccountable I became tired and sick. Till rising and gliding, I wandered off by myself into the mystical moist night air, and from time to time looked up in perfect silence at the stars. When Whitman wrote that poem in 1835, it was towards the end of the Industrial Revolution. And so there's no wonder really that he was saying that the more we find out about the world through science, the less mysterious and magical it appears to be, but I disagree. And actually the more we find out about the world through science, the more mystical, the more magical, we actually discover it to be. And I'd like to offer a riposte to Whitman in the form of another poem written by Rebecca Elson, the Canadian astronomer in 1999, called We Astronomers. We astronomers are nomads, merchants, circus people, all the earth our tent. We are industrious, we breed enthusiasms, honour our responsibility to all. But the universe has moved a long way off. Sometimes I confess starlight seems too sharp and like the moon I turn my face to the ground to the small patch where each foot falls before it falls and I forget to ask questions and only count things. And it's really important that we remember that we have this responsibility to all as scientists. I'm doing a piece of research at the moment sponsored by the Royal Society that looks at famous scientists who also wrote poetry, and trying to determine what it was about that poetry that teaches us about their science as well. So, scientists like Humphrey Davy, who discovered the mining lamp, some of the first elements, and also spent a large amount of his time drunk on nitrous oxide writing poems with Samuel Taylor Coleridge, which was amazing. Uh, also people like the next slide, which is going to show Ada Lovelace, who was the first world's first computer programmer, did amazing work on the difference engine and the analytical machine, and also was Lord Byron's daughter, so spent a lot of time writing amazing poetry and was able to merge the two worlds of science and poetry together. Also Ronald Ross, who was the first person to make the link between malaria and um, mosquitoes and won the Nobel Prize for that in the 1930s also wrote all of his scientific discoveries up in poetry, which is really interesting. But science and poetry aren't just stuck in history. And actually, we can use poetry today as a way to help to engender dialogue between experts and non-experts. Specifically, we can use it with non-scientists and scientists to help break down hierarchies of intellect. So when we bring scientists and non-scientists together, non-scientists have a wide range of information, but they can get really intimidated by all those letters after the names of scientists. So instead, what we can do is we can get them to write poetry. And by writing poetry, you create something that's personal, that's yours, that's subjective, that isn't right, it isn't wrong. And then we can share that poetry to help to engender two-way dialogue between experts and non-experts. And the work that I'm doing at the moment involves working with a lot of different community groups, such as TLC St. Luke's, which is a group of people living with mental health needs in Manchester. And I challenge them to write poetry about uh, air pollution so that we could better understand their needs on that particular subject. And this is one of the poems they wrote. I've never seen pollution, never noticed it. It's always been here, but I'm unaware of it, just breathing it in. And that presents us scientists with an idea of the difficulties that we face in trying to better understand and communicate with society. Another person who understood this was the beat poet Richard Browtigan, who in 1967 spent six months as the poet in residence at Caltech. He lived, ate and slept with scientists, during which time he wrote this poem, which states, 
I don't care how goddamn smart these guys are, I'm bored, it's been raining like hell all day long and there's nothing to do. That's all he wrote in six months. And what it tells us is that scientists need to work with poets and artists to better understand society. So as Johann von Goethe, the German polymath, tells us, science arose from poetry. When times change, the two can meet again on higher levels as friends. Thank you very much for listening.